There's still a beautiful specimen there, gotta say. Well, and she's, you, but she's got a bunch of fruit. And how many would you say is on here? What, 100? 50? I'd say, looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Probably somewhere around 14 or 15 that are ripe or nearly ripe. Uh huh. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, right at around 50. Oh, cool. And that's any with some size, and then there's a whole bunch of little tiny ones. I see new flowers popping up. Yep, a new little fruit setting. And how much warmer is it here, John? You said? Uh, th this neighborhood is about five degrees warmer than the airport on average in cold winters. And what do you think causes that in this little spot? Elevation. The airport's low, uh -huh. so the cold air drains to the airport. It's flat and low and open. This is high. We're at about 210, 220 feet in elevation. And we're also in the middle of the city, so there's a lot of asphalt and buildings around us and people are heating their homes so that's the urban heat island effect so and and just, just to kind of gauge it um my farm is low and cold northwest of here and out in the country and it's this yard's about 15 degrees warmer on a cold night than my farm this might, this might be actually a mexican type no this is a what they call marital or caribbean red i think and that's what's causing the hollow inside of it yeah it's the type it's the type of it. The me I was saying the, the Mexican type we had when I was a kid. Oh, was the thick had the solid had a solid trunk. There's a bunch of species of papaya. Each one tastes so different. I don't know what the what the parentage is. So this is just a rare, perfect location that would be hard to grow anywhere else with such a big papaya, right? Yeah, it's, you see the drainage. It's yeah, got it, it drops drainage. down. And now we're putting a cover over top of it to help the fruits ripen better and also keep it alive through the winter. And a lot of the this side of Tallahassee, a lot of it's clay soil. Mm -hmm. So if you were in a poorly drained spot with clay, that would be a problem for a papaya. That would kill it. Yeah, cold, wet feet. Would but not this help. one has good topsoil and immediate drainage. And she's been throwing a lot of uh, mulch down over the years. Organic matter. And you can just see how big the roots are. Now, if a papaya was right there near a house, would you have to worry about anything because the roots are different than the hardwood tree? Yeah, they, they it would won't. just grow around it, right? Yeah, they're not strong enough to push okay. up the sidewalk or house. Southwest is your third warmest side of the house. It puts yeah. up a lot of heat, that wall. The south or the southeast are gonna be your warmest. And don't worry about, about these leaves. If let the sheet break it or cut the leaves off, what's important is this growing tip with the new leaves mm -hmm. and these little fruits and flowers okay if you keep that tip protected you can grow new leaves and it'll set fruit and you'll get through you know july june or july oh that's awesome because I... if you protect the whole thing you have fruit year round at the airport they've gotten down to either 30, 28 to 30 something like that but we haven't actually got below 32 a year in town. Like last night it was 30 at the airport, but it was 35 in town. And didn't your property get down in the early upper 20s or no? Yeah, my, uh, it's, Cause, it's cause the, the difference is stark where I have the bananas in the coldest spots of the farm. They're completely defoliated, not a green patio. And then if you look around here at the at the bananas, they just they have, have no like issue. A singe, just a little bit. Any damage. Um, so. Because my Lloyd property, it's. A lot of stuff got hit bad, unless it was under a um, magnolia tree or around them cinder blocks I put around in the Christmas slots. Everything else got hit hard. Even papayas that went outside, their the whole tips hit. I've got some seedling mangoes like this. The same thing, just casting out the seeds, and they volunteered. Oh. And in the higher parts of my place in Quincy, under the pines, the mangoes are like this. They're fine, but the ones that were in the lower parts where it's cold. Very it just so, blows my mind how just a little bit, a few feet from something can make a such a big difference to a tree from and, getting across. In this area, um, differences in elevation, if you have a place where the cold air can settle, 
it can be significantly colder. And then under a canopy of trees like these pines and live oaks. So you can have, it, it wouldn't be crazy to have a difference of maybe 15 degrees in one yard. Like the warmest part of this yard or the coldest part of this not yard on a mm -hmm. still night when the air can stratify. Uh -huh. it, it could be 10 degrees. When I was younger and um, I came from southern Florida, so my familiarity with microclimates was, you know, by a big body of water, that was your microclimate. You had to go hundreds of miles in any direction to really see a change in climate. Uh -huh. Here, you just have to go to the top or bottom of the hill. And that's and a big difference. When, and I didn't understand that when I bought my farm. I was surprised how cold it was. Is it because of the cool air like goes down the hill? Yeah, the cold, on a still night, the cold air settles. My farm is surrounded by high hills. Mm -hmm. So there's a few hundred acres in there where cold air can, where the cold drains down from all those high hills on a cold still night and it settles in there. And I've seen frost 26 degrees on April 29th. If wow. there was anybody, if there was an official measurement, that would be a record breaker. There's nowhere for the air to drain out. There's a ravine where the Quincy Creek drains out. So that cold air kind of flows down those creek beds and pat piles up in that valley and it mm -hmm. can't drain out very quickly. So that whole little valley in there is just a real cold hole, which is good for apples and stuff. But not for tropical plants. Yeah, I got my butt kicked with the, with the tropical plants several times. And that's how, that's how you learn the hard way, unfortunately. Hey everybody, let's go check out my papaya before we end this video. And I wanted to say the last video with the, the large, gigantic papaya is on one of the yards that John maintenances and the lady that owns the yard, she's a sweet lady. Like, she loves this tree because she grew up from seed as a volunteer because it was a compost pile in that spot. So I would be very proud of that papaya too. Come with me, let's go check out my papaya. flower it's gonna have a skinny middle part and the inside is only gonna have male pollen so I'm gonna pull these petals back so this is the female flower and as you can see I'm just gonna repollinate it just to make sure that it's gonna take but with this type of female flower it has the female part and it also inside has the male pollen inside of it so it will automatically pollinate but I enjoy doing it and now you're about to see inside of it clearer all right see the mill pollen to the bottom so it will self pollinate on its own that's why I like this type of papaya all right hope you enjoy this video perfect location microclimate I'm growing this one on the wall And as you look down, we live right in front of a lake. So all that cold air that comes down will go below the lake because we're on a hill. We'll see how long we can keep this guy going. This little girl. Oh, there's a little frog living in there. What's up, buddy? This is Blake's Nature Live. Hope you enjoy this video. Subscribe, like, I'll catch you later.